Hello everyone, my name is BadnoBX, and today I'm going to teach you how to light the interior of a building. So we got this little scene that I built, it's just a small room with a door, because we're going to use that door for something in a little bit. So first off, to light this room, we're going to actually have to place a light. We don't want it directly against the ceiling, we want it low enough that it can actually affect the floor a bit. We're going to use this, you can use Alt 3 and Alt 4 to switch between lit and unlit mode. Or you can go up here and go to lit and unlit mode, that'll help you set all this stuff up before you have the lights set. So now that this is in we can actually open the uh, raise the outer cone and raise the inner cone. So we've got a pretty decent light. Because the room's so big I'm gonna raise the attenuation radius and that's gonna raise how powerful the light is. So both of those will matter here in a minute. So we're gonna duplicate, we're gonna move let's go 40. There we go. We're gonna move this light over here. So now that they're both placed, I'm actually going to change the color because I believe adding a tad bit of color can really change the scene. You notice I added a tiny bit of red and it actually changed the scene a lot to have this nice, warm, almost eerie look to it. So now that both lights are placed, we're going to go to an option called indirect lighting intensity because this is a large room we want the light bounce to be powerful enough to show the ceiling. So what this is is the when light hits a wall or a ceiling or any other mesh, it bounces. It doesn't just hit there and stay. Light likes to bounce. So this is the power of that bounce. If you go into world settings, you can also change the number of bounces. We're going to go ahead and set it to 5, which is a little high, but we're going to go ahead and do that for now. So once we build the lighting, both of these will actually increase how long it takes for the lighting to build, but because there's only two in a very few set of walls and stuff, it's going to be pretty weak. Didn't hit it with much more power. What do we have it set to? Three. Let's go ahead and set it up to six. So now that once we now once we build it, the light on the ceiling should be a lot more powerful. There we go. See now you can see the entire ceiling, and it's just two lights, and they're both lighting this entire room. If we weaken the lights a little bit, should have a different effect to it. Sorry, I had to check the recording because it kept going off. All right, see, as you notice, it matters how powerful your light is, how close it is to what it's bouncing off of, and what the indirect lighting intensity is set to. So the normal max is 6, and that's where we're going to keep it at, because we don't want it to be too overpowering. So let's go ahead and set this to 7. Let's go to 8 again. We're going to raise it off the ceiling a tad bit, because we don't want it to be too powerful. All right, so now we're going to build the light one more time, and then we're going to get into a bit more advanced stuff. All right, so now the ceiling is very lightly lit, but there's an easy way to fix this that so you don't have to play around with the light and constantly build it. So if you go to the post-processing, so we're actually going to control the slope in order to actually brighten the shadows a tad bit. So if we lower it a tad bit, it desaturates the scene, but it also makes the area a lot brighter. We can actually counterbalance this by going to the saturation and turning it back on. See, now we've got the color back, and then we've got the ceiling lit, the room looks nice. And that's how you can light a really big room pretty easily. Now you can use a lot more lights, but you gotta just be careful. You don't want to have too many lights to where they read X. So if you notice, there's four together and they're not red Xing, but as soon as I add a fifth, one of them will red X. You can only have four in a room at a time. So this is actually going to be a bit more of a well set up light instead of what we have over here now. So we're actually going to re-lower the slope because we don't you don't want to use that on every scene. So now that we've got four lights instead of two, the bounce light will be a bit more powerful and better maintained. So you can actually lower the intensity of these lights a little bit more. So as you notice, the, the ceiling's lit, the walls are lit. Now, of course, you can spin the lights around to where you want them to be, but this is as though the lights were located directly right there, right there, right there, and right there. And the area is lit. We can turn the post-processing back on. We can actually, because it's a bit more powerful, we can do the slope. We can, lower, we can raise it a bit more back near to where it was. Gives us a bit more of that color back. So as you notice, this is, the scene actually doesn't look that bad. If I had some models in here, it would look great. So now we're going to get into something even more advanced. So if we take a light, we go in here. Alright, so we're going to turn this light up. We're actually going to change the color to make this a bit more visible. 
Make it, we'll go with cyan or light blue, whichever color that is. We're gonna brighten it up. So as you notice, it's got a fair amount of detail, but if we build the lighting, the detail gets a little odd. And sometimes the light will disconnect from where it's actually coming from. So you notice there's light right there when it's got shadows. So this can be fixed simply by going into the model and actually editing the light map resolution. So it's the same style we did for the tree video, except for it's being used to actually get more fine detail inside of scenes as well. So this is going to raise how long the light build takes, but it's also going to raise how well the light is separated. So if you ever had light bleed, as you know, if you look back here, the light's bleeding. It, there's a chance that it could be because this wall is connected through to both rooms. But because I raised the light map radius, it'll actually get rid of it as well. So I didn't raise this one enough. Oh, wait, no, there it goes. Yeah. So like you, as you can see, it's gone. It's now fixed. It's no issue. So that's how you fix that. So that's how you can use... So if you notice in a lot of games where the light goes underneath the little door path, just raise the light map resolution and that's how you'll get that fixed. Alright, so if you noticed, I wanted to show you guys one more thing before we left. If you notice, both of these have two different shades to them and all the cubes on the floor, uh, all the floors are actually starting to separate. So this is the last thing I wanted to show you. So we go into concrete, floors. All right, so I was just editing the video and I realized that there's a weird situation going on where it wasn't recording some of the screens I showed. All right, so what I was saying is for lit and unlit, you can go up here and you, or you can use all uh, three and alt four to switch between them. As for this material over here, how I got it to look so nice, I actually had this in the video, but it didn't show. All right, so when you have a material with a specular on it, it makes it, it always makes it look a lot more plasticky. So even if it doesn't have a specular map on it, it's good to at least weaken how powerful that specular is, especially on something that's like concrete. So if you notice, that actually made it calm down a lot. And more things we can do would be like take the roughness map and then add a multiply to it. And then you can actually raise this to, let's say 1.3, because it doesn't need to go much higher. You just don't want it as strong as it was. So we hit apply, this should actually calm it. If you notice, it no longer is reflective as concrete should be. And that's how I fixed that. So as for the light that was in here, when I was fixing the light shot right here that was blue, how I fixed that was I went into the model, it brought up this table, then I scrolled down and you'll find under general settings, there'll be light map resolution. Raise this and that'll actually fix a lot of it. You'll have to do for every model that's connected. All right, I'm just gonna try and recreate this, the problem over in here. Okay, well this will work too. So if you notice, these two lights, these two walls are separated even though the light's hitting them pretty similar. But for some reason, as soon as it hits right here, they're disconnecting. Same for this one. It kind of gets this weird checkered style pattern. But if we take all of these, this will be how I'll show you. You can go to Windows, Developer Tools, Merge Actors, and it will actually take them all. You can place them wherever you want. I'm just going to keep them where it's at because I'm not too interested in fixing that right now. So you can, you'll have to replace them, but because it's all right there, I'm going to just delete these. And because this one's specifically right there, I can drop this right here. Now it turned it, but if I spin it 90 degrees, it's back in place where it was and I don't have to redo a bunch of stuff. So now when I build the lighting, it won't have that same checkered pattern. All right, see? Now instead of having a line cut off right there, it actually smooths along the entire wall. So yeah, that's how you fix the checker patterns. That's how you fix the floor as well. That's why this room in here doesn't have it, even though this is multiple floors. That's how I got its angle like this. You can do that for your entire building. When Make sure you're done with the model. Like, make sure you're done with the entire room before you do that. Because once you go in, you can't re-edit them separately. They all become one wall. 
it has all of the UVs of every single wall inside of it. So it's all one connective UV. So it's really, really useful when lighting large rooms. So I wanted to make sure to have that in this video. I hope you all learned something and uh, I hope you all have good luck game developing.